Welcome everyone to David Dudley Outdoors. And yes, here we are again, part three of a series. It's hard to believe we're in part three already, but this has been so much fun. The comments you guys are leaving and the suggestions that you guys are, are saying have been phenomenal. And I appreciate it. I am learning so much from you guys. So big shout out to y'all. And if you aren't a subscriber, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Most importantly, hit the notification button. I never know when I'm posting. So unless I don't have a set schedule, so unless you have the notification button hit, you'll probably miss out. So either way, guys, my goal in this series is to figure out how do you structure forward-facing sonar technology and tweaking it with the rules of today, of, of what we've always known in bass fishing. So here's another forward-facing sonar scenario for you. If you were a tournament organization and you were the tournament director, how would you handle this fish catch? Some tournament organizations say this, if you visually see a bass first, and then you look at him with your sonar, and you catch him on the outside of the mouth, he's illegal, because you actually saw that fish first, okay? Forward facing, you got two different things. You got forward facing, looking with your eyes, where you're visually seeing them with your human eyes or you're visually seeing them with electronic eyes. Two different, two different topics. Let's paint this scenario. We all know brim bed fishing is gonna be coming up this summer. And if you are a brim bed fisherman, what happens is, and I, I never know what they're doing, but you go to these brim beds and let's just say there'll be three to five bass sitting outside of these beds parked, looking in at these bass spawning. Part of me says they're there just taunting them. But there'll be three typically big bass sitting on the outside of these brim beds waiting to eat them. Wait, that's what we think. That's what the magazines say is waiting to eat them. But yet we know that bass love it. Now, if I'm going down the bank and I go, whoop, I look down and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at that. There's three bass sitting on the outside of that brim bed. Now remember, if you're a tournament organization, tournament director, how are you gonna rule this fish catch? Oh my gosh, there's, now I visually just saw three bass. I take my boat, I go way out in the pocket, I sit up on them 70 feet away from forward facing sonar. I kind of know where the brim bed's at. I can't see a brim, I can't see a minnow, I can't see my bait, I can't see the bass, I can't see nothing. I just know in that general direction, in that general direction, there were three bass. Now when I'm spinning my boat, could the bass have spooked off? Could they have went away? Could they have done something? They could have. I lost visual contact with them. I swing my boat back around. I line up my cast and I look down at my electronic eyes. My electronic eyes. And I'm like, ooh, I think they're still there. And if it's the same three bass, but I think they're still there. I go, Phew. and we know two different baits that are typically good, or three, a drop shot, a Nico or Wacky Worm, and a some type of prop bait, bluegill prop bait. It's got props on it. Or walking bait, it doesn't matter. You look down there, I throw over there. I now am using electronic eyes to see what I perceive as bass. I throw a topwater bait over there and go, choo, choo, and I see the bass come up, kaboosh. Bite my top water. He bit it, but I got him on the outside of the mouth. Some tournament organizations say, because I visually saw that bass, and I knew it was that bass, once I had made my loop, and a minute and a half later, that bass was still there, and I snagged him purposely on the outside of the mouth with the top water bait, he's now, I have to throw him back. I have to throw him back. Let me hear in your comments, would you throw that bass back? Would you throw him back? Because the rules stay that 
Any sight fishing bass must be caught in the mouth. Now, I went from human sight fishing to electronic sight fishing. This is, this is why I feel rules need to be adjusted. Because you cannot put the weight on an angler to determine whether or not that's the same fish. You can't put the weight on a tournament to determine those kind of scenarios. But if you throw at a brush pile, you're using your electronic eyes, you throw at a brush pile. And let's just say I didn't see the bass first. Visually see, and I throw at a brush pile, and I see my drop try to do it down, I visually see the bass go over there, and I set the hook, and that spotted bass had the tail, and I caught him on the outside of the mouth. He's legal, David. You can weigh that fish in. David, no, okay. No, he, he just, you didn't, in, the intent was not to snag him. Correct. My, I never intend to snag a bass ever. But your intent was it. So you can keep that bass. Oh, but no, 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 no. That bass that was on the bed, that you perceive is on the bed, and you threw over there with your electronic eyes and caught him on it. That one you can't keep. Well, was he a spawner? Was he, what was he? I don't know. I don't know. My point is this. As a tournament, the scenario is this. Is that fish legal? Would you as a tournament organization say, David, you can keep that bass. You, you didn't intend to snag him, especially with a topwater bait. Who can intentionally snag a fish on a topwater bait? Intentionally snag. It's impossible. I can't go around the lake going, where are you at, bass? And throw a topwater bait and go, try to snag a bass with a topwater. <laughs> Come on. All right. Or I, we could paint a scenario. I threw a Dudley Wacky Worm. And by the way, link is in the description. But I throw a Dudley Wacky Worm over there. And it goes down. He bites half the worm. I catch it. It's a five pounder, but he only had half the wacky worm. I snag him on the outside of the mouth. Some organizations say, David, that's an illegal catch. You got to throw him back. If you, if you comment one way, how would you change this scenario? How would you change it? What kind of rules would you put in place for forward facing sonar rules? I don't want the weight on me as an angler, I don't want the weight on me to dictate what mood the fish is in or what stage the fish is on in. I don't want it. Make sure you comment. I will read them. It's like one of the first things I do. Love it. I appreciate you guys' support. I will be back at you soon in another video. Part four of this series will be following this one. I can't wait for y'all to hear that one either. I will see you again soon.